What's up guys? My name is Katie. I live out of my 2003 Honda Element and I am going to give you a tour of it. I've been traveling for on and off about a year now. I bought her a year ago, exactly, pretty much. And I travel around the country and build cob houses and earthen homes, so this is my vehicle to do so. When I don't do that, I travel. Okay, so we're gonna start on the exterior. I didn't do much to this car. The main goal when living out of this is to be as stealthy as possible. I spent a lot of time in the city, so making it look like someone isn't living in here was the goal. So I didn't really do much when I bought it. I put um, some new wheels on there just because they were about seven years old. I do have tinted front windows and windshield just to add some more privacy. Um, to match the already tinted back windows. And that's about it. It came with the um, sidebar here, which was really awesome. But yeah, other than that, it's all that's happening on the exterior, which is the way that I like it, so. All right, now we are going to go inside of the car, which I'm very proud of. I built it myself. Um, I took a lot of inspiration from Sage Rohde's design, so you might see a little bit of similarity there. But yeah, in general, this is what we're working with. I really wanted to make it as useful as possible. I do work on the road, so I really emphasize, you know, uh, the desk area and stuff like that with adding little personal touches of my own. So yeah, the desk opens like this. And it gives me a lot of room to work and also store all of my materials for what I'm creating. Um, an interesting part of these shelves, which is one of my favorite things, I was trying to figure out a door system for these and I just, it came to me in the middle of the night to use old cooking sheets for like cooling cookies and stuff. So I just got these at the Dollar Tree, decorated them with some yarn and they kind of just open like this with little hair ties. <laughs> so that's my way of the lightweight door system um, and then I really wanted a place to get ready in the morning so I have my little sink just down over there. This is my sink setup. Um, I have a mirror that's really fun. A lot of people really like this and I just screwed it in to the headliner here which you know some people wouldn't like but I love it. <laughs> um, and then the sink system just runs off of this tube. I got this water electric pump off of Amazon here and I'm sure you guys have seen it before if you know anything about living in your car. And this tube just runs into a water tank that I have right here on the side. So that's really useful. This is two and a half gallons, so it's not too heavy either. And then it's just a bowl. <laughs> so there's no gray water system, which is fine. It's mainly my purpose for the sink is to be able to brush my teeth if I'm in the middle of the city or something like that. And I just want some privacy while I'm doing that sink is just a bowl that I got from like Walmart which is really nice because it comes with a little cover that just stores on the side so if I do have water in here and I can't dump it until the morning I just pop the lid on and then pop it back in here and it won't you know spill or go anywhere um, which is really convenient and then it acts as another surface too I can use that as a table if I want which any surface in your car when you're living out of it that can become a table will become a table because it's super useful. So this is my bed system. It is actually a full six feet. Um, I myself am five foot 11 and oftentimes I get comments from people saying, there is no way you fit in that car. <laughs> like, absolutely no way, but I do, I promise. Um, I built it myself and it measures to six feet exactly. And it's really nice because I can still have the front seat looking quite normal. So when I am, you know, camping, I can just close this curtain here and it doesn't look super weird. Like there isn't, the front seat isn't smushed to the front. So it looks quite normal from the outside. But for me, it provides plenty of space. And if you come around to the side, which I can show you in a minute, the bed does fold down. On right here and this again, Sage Rohde totally came up with this. So this is on a hinge system, so I can pull this out, which is all of my cooking stuff. This is where I keep my kitchen. <laughs> and 
and then these hinges here fold down and then the bed can flip up and I can pull this passenger seat all the way back so I can have a passenger if I want to which has come in handy actually a lot of people think I never have passengers but I actually do quite often so that's one of my favorite features about it a key aspect of my build was the decoration which doesn't seem that important to many people but I am an interior designer and architect so making sure that my space was you know cute and comfortable for me to decorate and live in was really important to me because you know your environment matters and it really affects your mental health so <laughs> I've put a lot of work into making this space somewhere where I enjoy to be thoroughly whether it be through the little flags or the star lights um, I recently decorated for Christmas with my little gingerbread string lights there. Um, but yeah, that was just super important to me to make sure that I could make the space my own. Okay, so my bed has um, really a lot of storage in it actually. So like I said, I travel around and build um, houses out of my element. So having proper tool storage was actually really important. And this here is just some pegboard that slides out and it goes quite far back underneath my bed and it stores all of my Milwaukee tools, which I love. And if I need to, I can access it just under here. Um, I almost never do, but if I need to, I can. And it's also where I store my window covers. So I made these out of um, that reflective bubble wrap that everybody uses and just black duct tape on the back I'm sure you guys have seen this before. It's quite popular. So from the exterior, it looks black. And then I chose <laughs> this crazy little fairy kitty design, which is not everybody's cup of tea, but it makes me quite happy. And it's really only up when I'm asleep. So it's kind of fun to wake up to. Um, it's one of my favorite things. <laughs> you store some of your tools under the bed? Yes. I hear that you changed the starter and the radiator in your element. <laughs> yes, I did. I did. So I was camping out in Washington and I go to start my car and it doesn't start. Never a good sign. Try the battery. It's not the battery. And I figure out that it was the starter. So I swapped the starter with the help of a friend um, and we got that all swapped out. It was my first time kind of working on cars, but YouTube teaches you anything. It really does. You just need determination. So I swapped that out and then the radiator started leaking coolant. So of course I had to swap that out and it was kind of empowering. I've never worked on cars like that before, but you know, when you're in this situation, you kind of have to do what you have to do to make it work. And luckily my Honda Element is quite easy to work on. Honda does a good job with designing in that kind of a way. So. Yeah, it was super empowering. And I don't know, when you build one thing, you can do a lot. And I built this myself, so yeah, there's just a certain level of skill that you need, but also just pure determination. Okay, so a main part of my cooking situation and just living in general out of this car is this table. This actually was a really fun thing to design. I wasn't originally going to do a table on this end, but I've seen a lot of people live out of their elements and they cook on this, which for me is quite, quite, quite short. So I really thought that a table would be super helpful here and it is, I love it. It's got this really funky shape so that it doesn't intersect with any of the, um, you know, things going on down here, any of the shelving, it kind of just bends around. I tried to get as much table space as I could without making it um, block any of this. So, yeah, and I use this all the time. And actually, funnily enough, when it's down like this, it creates the perfect angle for a backrest. So this seat is actually very comfortable for sitting. Yeah, that was something really fun that I discovered. This is like my perfect chill spot. Um, yeah, I hang out here almost all the time. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I know where, what part of your element to find you now. Yes, exactly. I'm always here, never on that side. <laughs> <laughs> so I just put my Nemo backpacking uh, pad underneath it, actually just this week, and I have never slept better in my life. So it's a very comfortable bed, but it's, it's not that wide. It only goes to about here, 
um, which was a purposeful design. I really don't need that much space. And these boards come out. The main reason that I did that was so it could act as a desk. Because like I said, I work a lot on the road. Mm -hmm. And so I can put my feet down here and this, this camping pad is actually kind of becoming in the way. So I don't know if I'll keep it as part of my permanent setup, but for now it's nice. So without the camping pad there, this really is quite a sofa-like feature um, that you can put your legs down and sit like a normal person but I rarely do that <laughs> this this almost never comes out and when it does it's honestly kind of a pain to put back in so but it's nice because then I can access the storage that I have underneath here so which acts as like the same kind of uh, cookie sheet doors here they just butterfly open like that I keep fancy clothes and extra bed sheets and stuff down there, and then lots of extra shoes. Oh God, this is never going back in. Don't put this in the video. Oh, I'm putting it. <laughs> no, <laughs> but I'm making it like... It's a disaster. <laughs> this is why I don't take this out. We are okay. living situation, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so on this side, I have my water tank here that I was talking about in relation to the sink. And that's kind of how the tubing just connects and I just, pop it into this hole down here and then when I'm driving it seals up completely which is really nice and I have a cooler I don't have a fridge um, it would be really nice to have a fridge I just don't have that capacity and honestly this cooler just stores water it almost never has ice in it which is uh, what I hear a lot from people that have coolers that live out of their cars <laughs> it's kind of just become another cabinet but it's nice when I need it um, and then underneath here I have a really large power bank. So I do a lot of work on the road and I have a quite a large uh, demanding laptop, meaning it needs a lot of power. So this thing will last me about a week and I got it on a Black Friday sale. So it was actually quite cheap and I love it. I love my Jackery. It serves me quite well. I have a solar panel on top here actually. And I've just, <laughs> it's quite a janky setup, but it works. And I just run the cords through the moon roof and there's no leaking or anything. So I can uh, charge it via solar or what I often end up doing is taking it into libraries, <laughs> just charging it in the library. They really don't mind. So yeah, utilize your local libraries. It's a fun place to hang out and I'm there all the time. Okay, one of the last things that I wanted to talk about was this curtain rod here. Um, it actually is just an old piece of PVC pipe that I um, made a hole in this and drilled into here. Some people would uh, call me crazy for doing that, but this is my forever home, so <laughs> it's what I did. And I actually had problems in the heat because it's PVC and so it would bend really bad and it would fall out all the time. It was making me really angry. <laughs> and I had a friend turn to me one day and he said, why don't you just put a metal rod in there? So that's exactly what I did. I haven't had any problems since. You can hear it kind of. There's just like a thinner, stiff metal rod in there. And so it doesn't fall out or bend. And it's so perfect. It was just the idea that I needed. I love having friends as engineers. <laughs> so yeah, this curtain has served me really well. And I sewed a fun little design on my side so it's it's a fun pattern on my side but then on the exterior side it's just black so it looks quite normal but yeah so this pvc pipe and all of the materials have been somewhat reclaimed from my mother's garage uh, a couple of years ago my grandfather passed and he lived in florida and he got all of his belongings sent over in these giant plywood shipping crates I like to compare them to, if you've ever seen Madagascar, with the zoo animals, those crates, um, that's kind of what they were shipped in. And so this build cost me virtually nothing. I tore apart all of the plywood boxes and I just reclaimed all of that wood to make this. And it was really awesome for my wallet and the environment. It was a win-win all around. And the wood was in pretty rough shape, but nothing a little sanding, some paint, and staining can't fix to make it look beautiful again. Well, it made me decide to move into a car. I've always kind of wanted to since I was, you know, young and I saw people doing it online and I said, well, 
if they can do it, I could do it too. But it never seemed like the right time, and I had a little tiny car just a year ago, and so it never really seemed feasible. I know that people do live out of their sedans, but I was not going to be one of those people. I needed a little bit more room. And so a year ago, I unfortunately got into a really bad accident, and my sedan that I had at the time was totaled. And luckily, nobody was hurt. Um, and so I took that as somewhat of a sign that maybe I should do what I've always wanted to do and live my dream. And so I started researching cars to kind of live out of. But one of my top priorities always was to be able to camp anywhere. And people see this car, nobody thinks you live out of it. Even when I tell them I live out of it, they say, no way, <laughs> there's just no way. But you know, it's really possible and it's kind of the perfect size. So that's what made me decide to get a Honda Element um, with that in mind. So yeah, that's, that's what got me on the road and I'm very happy. It's been the best experience of my lifetime. So yeah, I would say one of the best parts, oh gosh, what's the best part? I don't know, the, one of the best parts is just, you, you travel all the time and you're driving down these roads and you get to see just the most beautiful things ever. And it's almost so normal to me now that I've become like, oh yeah, there's another mountain. But then you stop and you think it's like, there's a mountain and I'm from the Midwest where it's very flat. So it's just really amazing that my commute every day is seeing just the most beautiful landscapes ever. Um, and I feel really privileged that I get to live this life. And it's so amazing that I get to go to all these new places for virtually zero dollars. I have a national parks pass, the annual one that you pay 80 bucks for at the beginning of the year. And I live out of this thing. So I really don't spend that much money traveling. And that's just, that's the best part. And that always will be the best part. It gets hard sometimes. I would say the worst part is the loneliness. It's hard to travel alone, especially when you're out in places with, you know, little service or you can't contact uh, your loved ones. And yeah, it gets lonely fast, but you find community anywhere. I was just in the Redwoods the other week, saw a girl living out of her van and now we're friends and I'm seeing her in a couple of days. You know, you, you make friends on the road fast when you live this kind of a lifestyle. Um, it's just that shared struggle and joy. So, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing all that. Yeah, of course. And I went I'm, on a tangent, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure you're gonna inspire some people like for the way that you decide to live your life. Good. Yeah, it's really, it's not that hard. I tell people that I live out of my vehicle and their first response is almost always, oh, I've always wanted to do that. I'm like, just do it. it. It really doesn't take a lot, you know, start with the car that you have. It doesn't have to be some fancy expensive van and you don't need a lot of money to start doing it. I only had a couple thousand saved up. I hit the road and you just work along the way and it comes to you. So just go out there and do it. It's worth it. You can do it. <laughs> and the other cool thing too that I noticed is that you're doing what you want to do, but at the same time, you're work, working full time. Yeah. So it yeah. is possible, right? It is possible to work half a full time job, make the income and also travel. Yeah, it's possible. You might spend a lot of time at libraries like I do, <laughs> but then, you know, on your couple of days off, you get to go walk in the redwoods or walk along the coast of California. It's your backyard, you know, so it's always, you know, people think I live a life of travel and fun all the time. It's not always fun and glamorous, but it's all about balance. So I've really found, I think, a perfect way to do work-life balance, as they call it. <laughs> awesome. And I noticed that in your Instagram, you post some of your Honda elements and places that you've been adventures. Yeah. Would yeah. you share your Instagram to people that wants to follow you? Just Yeah, you we know? could link it down below. I don't post awesome. a lot. I have a YouTube channel only posted like a handful of times but I hope to post some more of my travels if you want to check it out uh, we can throw it down below there you go we yeah. will do that okay uh, thank you so much again mm -hmm. and 
guys see you in the next honda element video yay bye, bye. <laughs>